Good morning on this beautiful Sunday. I welcome you to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lidditz. I'm Pastor Robert Wallace, the Associate Pastor, Pastor for Congregational Care. This morning we celebrate Vicar Kimberly Todd's two years of ministry with us. Soon she leaves for her year of internship as she prepares for ordination. Vicar Kim comes to the pulpit today reflecting upon the gospel passage where Jesus is berated by religious authorities for eating on the Sabbath, for healing on the Sabbath. And it raises a question, why God's law? What is the purpose of the Sabbath? Where does God's mercy enter into the conversation? I'm glad we can be together this morning and it is my hope that this time of worship will be a blessing for you and for those who gather in the sanctuary. Be blessed. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Rob Myles, and welcome to St. Paul today. It's uh, the beginning sort of of our, of our summer here. We have a couple special things happening. Um, so I'm excited to, to worship. I'm excited that we've come together after a, yet again a crazy week in our world to uh, take a breath and know that we're in the presence of the living God. And so I invite us all to rise as you are able. We worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Here are the good news. By grace you have been saved. Out of great love and mercy, God sent the beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. And as he lives victorious in the grave, I declare to you that in his name, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Together we join in singing, number 588, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power restore us to wholeness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. Today's reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. The reading is found on page 215 to 216 in the Old Testament of the Pew Bibles. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will speak Psalm 81 responsibly as printed in the bulletin. Sing aloud to God our strength, shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festal day. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, I admonish you, O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? How he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They were watching him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. 
He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. It's time for our children's message, and it's nice to see so many kids here, so please come on up. I have somebody to introduce you to today, so I'm glad to see that you're all here. All right, come on up and come on over. Today you see that I'm not alone up here. I have a special guest with me. I have a special friend with me. And today I want to introduce you most officially to Pastor Subi. Pastor Subi is from another country. She's from the country called Tanzania. And she is here to spend her summer at Camp Kirkenwald. And I think that some of you, many of you have heard of that place. And she will be one of the counselors there. So if you will be at Kirkenwald this summer, we will see her again. But a place where she is from is very different for us. And many of us have not been there. And so I have a special question to ask Pastor Subi today. She has something that she's going to teach us. I know that she is very busy learning a lot in her week here so far, but now it's time for us to learn. So Pastor Subi, could you tell us the special greeting that you would like for us to learn today? Okay, thank you. If we want to greet a Christian friend when you are in the church or around the church or on the street you say you cannot say hello or good morning you say utukufu kwa mungu it means glory to God that is our our special greetings for Christian when you are in the church, around the church or on the street that is what we do utukufu kwa mungu thank you I learned this and I want us to learn this as well I think it's so neat to know that when Pastor Subi is home and she's in her church and in her her town, in her country, when you meet somebody who is a Christian, you don't say hello. You don't come to church and say good morning. There's a special greeting for people who share the faith. So I wrote this down because I know it's a lot for us to learn, but we're going to do it today. So, Pastor Subi, could you say this one more time for us? And if you can read, you'll see the letters here. Could you say it again? Utukufu kwa mungu. Okay, let's try this together, kids and whole church. Utukufu kwa mungu. Let's try it again. Utukufu kwa mungu. And Pastor Subi, one more time. What does this mean again for us in English? In English, we say glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't that special? So boys and girls, today when we hear so much in the gospel reading that Mr. Kevin read and that Vicar Kim read, we hear this word Sabbath. Sabbath meaning the day that we worship, the day that we rest. And so when we come to worship, I hope all of us might take a chance to to learn something new. And instead of saying good morning, instead of saying hello when you come to worship, try saying glory to God when you see a friend who shares your faith, okay? And if you really want to try, try saying utukufu kwa mungu, okay? So let us say a prayer together, and then, Pastor Subi, we will give you your kids' bulletins for today on that special gospel that we heard. Please repeat after me. Thank you, God, for our Christian friends all around the world. Glory be to you. you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Subi, for being here. Boys and girls, will you come and take a kid's bulletin back to your seat? You can say hi to Pastor Subi. You can say, Utukufu kwa mungu. Pray with me. O 
Lord, our God, soften our hearts to hear and learn the holy word that rescues and restores us. Amen. I have an invisible disability. A hearing impairment from birth means that I am almost totally deaf in my left ear. In public settings, I angle to keep the world on my right. My family members are so trained that they find it awkward to walk on anybody's left or to watch a movie without closed captioning or subtitles. When I can't catch keywords in a conversation, I watch people's faces for emotional clues. Even with all of my compensation strategies, I know that I still miss things. It can be embarrassing. It can be humorous. For years, when I was young, my parents and doctors diligently monitored my hearing in the hope that my hearing loss wasn't degenerative. We wondered if I should learn sign language. We sought a cure. Would hearing aids or surgery help? They would not. My hearing loss is permanent, but stable. We'll see how aging goes. <laughs> Today, the Gospel writer Mark gives us two emotionally charged Jesus stories back to back. In the second one, there's a man with a visible disability in the synagogue where Jesus is. The man lives with a withered hand. But Mark doesn't give us the man's background. Was his hand withered from birth? Was there an illness? Was there an accident? And Mark doesn't give us the man's strategies. How does he compensate for his disability? Does he have support from his family? Does he experience judgment or prejudice? Is he financially disadvantaged in a manual labor economy? We can guess. We could probably guess well, given the times, but we don't know. Mark's sparing details about the man tell us that he is not the main character of this story, only that he is the lightning rod for a sharp encounter between main characters, Jesus and the Pharisees. You see, the Pharisees, they show up a lot in the Gospels and in the book of Acts, and they are not flat characters against all that is good and right. The Pharisees started out as a small cohort of religiously devout artisans and farmers, people who work with their hands. And they separated themselves out from the dominant Greco-Roman culture and philosophy of the day. Instead of that dominant culture and philosophy, they accepted they practiced, they preserved, and they taught the ancient traditions of Israel. Through their religious expertise and rigor, they grew and they ascended to religious and political leadership. The Pharisees had an outsized influence on Jewish identity. And being a devout Jew himself, there is much about which Jesus and the Pharisees agree. And the dialogue between them about God, God's people, and their history together could be very constructive and spiritually enriching. For these two encounters between Jesus and the Pharisees in the grain fields, and in the synagogue. Observing the Sabbath is the marker of Jewish identity. The command to observe the Sabbath goes all the way back to the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. Because the people of Israel were slaves, 
Because the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt, laboring without respite under a hardened empire, God stretched out God's hand to rescue and restore the people. God gave them what they didn't have before, a weekly respite from the grind during which they could recall who and whose they were. The Sabbath was a weekly respite from the grind during which they could recall who and whose they were. Stop, stop the treadmill. Relieve their shoulders of the weight of the world. Free up their hands. Remember that I am the Lord, your God, who rescues and restores you. Remember, remember that I am the Lord, your God, who rescues and restores you. And this word comes to us as well. We receive this command too. It is part of our Christian identity and tradition. However, it turns out that we need far more than the command to take a day off work for worship every week. Left in our hands, observing the Sabbath becomes one more way we seek to prove ourselves or improve ourselves. It becomes one more expectation that we can't live up to. It hardens, and the word of grace and mercy it's meant to share goes silent. When that happens, when the word of grace and mercy goes silent, we deal with that in one of two ways. We either double down or we shake it off. When we double down, we are likely to end up as rigid as the rules we impose. And when we shake it off, we are likely to end up spiritually empty and hungry for the bread of real presence. Jesus' ministry in these two stories today rejects both of these. He rescues and restores the Sabbath from what we humans make of it. He returns it to us as grace and mercy. The man with the withered hand is the lightning rod for this. You see, physical disability, visible or invisible, is just one way to be human. Some of us have disabilities and some of us don't. Some of us don't have them yet, but we will later. And we will learn how to live with them, lean on our people, and develop compensation strategies. We will seek a cure, and sometimes we will find it. Sometimes it will find us. We give thanks for medical advances and medical providers. Still, it remains that physical disability neither diminishes nor enhances our humanity. Disability neither diminishes nor enhances our humanity. Disability is just one way of being human. So then, what is going on when Jesus cures the man with the withered hand, who, by the way, did not ask to be cured, nor did he draw attention to himself in any way? What is it that makes Jesus so angry what is it that breaks Jesus' heart when he looks around the synagogue that Sabbath day? Jesus is both angry and sad about the hardness of the human heart. It's a condition that affects not only some, but all humans. A condition that diminishes our God-given humanity. Jesus is both angry and sad about the hardness of the human heart because this is a condition that affects all of us and it's a condition that diminishes our humanity. If you saw it, do you remember the end 
of the animated movie Inside Out? It's been a while. The main character, Riley, she's an 11-year-old girl, and she's really hurting because of a cross-country move that her family made. She finally admits at the end of the movie to her parents what they already knew, that she is not OK. But now, now they can offer her comfort and understanding. Her deep sadness is tempered then with the joy of connection. If you haven't seen this movie, I really, I really highly recommend it. The point is that when the human heart is hard, it is incapable of feeling the complex set of emotions that are needed to recognize our own humanity and that of others. When the human heart is hard, it's incapable. It's incapable of the complexity of emotion that we need to recognize our own humanity and that of others. And this compromises our ability to have constructive and enriching interactions with one another. So instead, we mercilessly take each other to task. And when we do that, we either have to harden our own hearts or tap out. We saw this happen this week. The Lititz community saw this play out, and there are many people today with broken hearts because of it. When Jesus, when Jesus cures the man with the withered hand, it is an act of mercy. But if we think that it is about the disability or Jesus having something to prove, then we have missed it. Jesus takes us to the heart of the matter, crossing the boundary of Sabbath observation to expose the actual problem, which is the hardness of the human heart. There is only one thing. You see, there is only one thing that can rescue and restore the hard human heart, and it is not to prove yourself or to improve yourself. It is not to try harder. It is mercy. It is mercy. And mercy, mercy comes to you unbidden when and where you least expect it. Maybe even in church on a Sunday morning. You may have come today with a broken heart, a hardened heart, or a sick heart and all the ill effects of these. You may have come this morning to prove yourself or to improve yourself. To you, to you, Jesus comes and stretches out his hand, his hand marked by the nails of mercilessly being taken to task. And he takes your heart in whatever condition you find it today into his merciful hands to restore it and seal it with the Sabbath promise that it is made for more. It is made to be with him forever. Amen.
affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place praying for the world that God so loves. Holy God, we thank you for a day of rest and praise. Help us to view Sabbath keeping, prayer and worship as merciful gifts from you that renew us. Give us patience and perseverance in times when prayer and worship did not strengthen us as we would like. Give us rest and renewal this day that we might joyfully work and serve the other six days of this week. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we recognize that our world has many divisions, including those that erupt in violence. We pray for peace in Ukraine and the Middle East. We pray for our own nation, that we may learn how to listen to each other and work together. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you are the great healer. As you healed the man with the withered hand years ago, we ask you to heal us today. We pray for those who struggle with anxiety and depression and any other illness. We lift before you the names of people in need of healing, either out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Your Holy God, we thank you for the beauty of our sanctuary and our campus. We pray that outdoor worship this summer will draw people on the margins of faith into prayer and praise of you. We pray that the sacred grounds might become a common ground, a place where all find Jesus and receive his forgiveness that sustains us as disciples. Lord, in your mercy, by the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share the peace. for a few brief announcements. If you would like to, you can come back to church a second time today at 11 o'clock because then there'll be a little bit of a party for Vicar Kim uh, giving uh, thanks for, for her ministry uh, for here for four years and during which she's been at seminary. And now she uh, moves on again to the next stage in her ordination. So again, 
come back and have a little bit of cupcake or other sort of treats, you're more than welcome to. In fact, after the second uh, service in the month of June, we'll be having Vacation Bible Fun, just some time for, for games and crafts and so forth for, for kids, but really for, for people of all ages. Um, we also started our summer season of Pod and Pub. We had about 13 people there on Thursday night. You're welcome to join us uh, for that. You don't have to come to every one. It's built around the idea of a summer schedule and people coming and going. Next weekend, the 9th, we will um, have uh, a welcome class uh, at 11 a.m., and that will be for people that have been visiting St. Paul. Maybe you're just curious about the ministry here and want to learn more about it and where you might fit into that. As uh, Deacon Emily said, we've had uh, Pastor Subilaga with us the last week, and I've invited her today to uh, help me with the words of institution at communion. Many of you know we pray for the Conde Diocese or our partner, Congo Lutheran, uh, and that is where uh, Subi is from, not from our particular congregation, but, but very, very close in that region, and so she's going to help me with uh, communion today. And like, uh, she's going to be at Camp Kirkenwald this summer. Last summer we had, I think, over 30 kids and adults and youth at camp. And that was made possible because of your generosity that helped us subsidize those costs. And for many of those kids, it was their first time going and helping their families make that possible. So I, I thank you, uh, as always, for your generosity that allows us to move ahead in mission and in ministry. And so I invite us all to rise as we present our gifts. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what you have been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord. And so at the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your, their unending hymn. Yesu Kristo usiku ule aliotolewa aliutoa mkate. Naye akiisha kushukuru akawapa wanafunzi wake akisema, "Twaeni mle kwa maana huu ndio mwili wangu uliotolewa kwa ajili yenu. Fanyeni hivi kwa ukumbusho wangu." Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Na vivi hivi, baada ya kula, akakitua kikombe, na ya kiisha kushukulu, waka wapa wanafunzi wake kisema, nyoeni nyote katika hiki, kwa mana hii ndiyo damu yangu ya gano jipia, imwagikayo kwa jiri enu na kwa jiri ya wengi kwa ondoleo la dhambi. Fanyeni hivi, kila mnyuapo kwa kumbusho wangu. Amen. Again, if they had eaten, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to all his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we do this, we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in that hope, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meaning, the purpose of the Sabbath is caught for us in the Genesis story. And then when God gave the commandments to Moses, the Sabbath was there, the observance of the Sabbath for, for worship and rest was expressed. But somehow that purpose gets lost when we double down, when we make the law of following it more important than the meaning of following it. Mercy is set aside. In her sermon today, Vicar Kim helped us to appreciate we have a merciful God, a God who works through Sabbath rest that we may find ourselves at peace. And in stepping aside from all the responsibilities that fill our day, we have the healing rest of the presence of God. May you live in that rest and peace this day.